I think it's been a fun project, mm -hmm. but uh, one thing I learned was that you couldn't have done this on your own and I couldn't have done it on my own. We've spent some time together. Mm -hmm. uh, dealing with your project, Sleeves Tweed. Mm -hmm. And we're doing so here at uh, Vorstedt's, mm -hmm. uh, which is a small little artisan mill, you could call it, slash laboratory. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the jobs that we do here is to find a specific yarn for a specific item mm. or product. And as you can see in front of us, we've done something. We've done something, yeah, we have. It ended up being something. It ended up being something really nice, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's all made from Swedish wool. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we didn't hold back when we, we tried this. We actually experimented with uh, a lot of different blends. Yeah, we did. We started out doing I don't know, five, six different ones. And I've got six on the board. Yeah. And then we ended up doing another one. And then we did <laughs> another one. The real one. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the real one for now. The real one for now. <laughs> Can still sub be subject to change, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Um, I've learned a few things in this process, and I've done this a few times, and it's amazing that every time you do something new, you can still learn something new at the same time. And um, I certainly learnt a little bit about weaving, because mm -hmm. you told me quite a lot. Yeah. And so that made us tweak the yarn mm -hmm. in order to work in your favour. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we did yeah. discover a lot, a lot of things along the way, sort of like, <laughs> it feels like we've been standing by this spinning machine several times, and we've spun the yarn, and we've both looked at it, and then we say, this is amazing, this is the best thing we've ever done. It's fantastic it's perfect and then I go home and I weave with it and I'm like no it's no. not <laughs> <laughs> we can do better uh, and then we did the same thing sort of again uh, and it was we sort of did yeah it was the same thing again actually we did react the same way the second time we were like oh this is perfect but then it ended up and so we did the last yeah. time as well yeah well yeah true and uh, we might do it 20 times more we don't know <laughs> no There's still room for improvement. Always. And there might be small changes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could do big changes in the blend, and that's one thing. Yeah. But the structure of the yarn and, and how hard it's spun and how its thickness and, yeah. and everything, that also uh, 
has a lot to say about the the end product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it, even small things, sort of alongside the way, you change a minor minor thing alongside the way, and it makes a huge difference in the end. So I can't know this until you've actually gone to the loom and made a piece of cloth. No, exactly. And that's for me. That's been one of the biggest things with this project that I. Even though I'm a hand spinner and I've, I've spun lots and woven lots with my hand spun, but it, in hand spinning it's kind of a very direct process because you can go from the spinning wheel to the loom and then you're sort of there with everything at the same time all the time. But here it's like I come here and we spin a yarn and then I go home and I have to make something out of it and then I discover what we actually did when we were here. So it's not entirely easy. No, and it's not a very fast process either. No. <laughs> so you need a lot of patience Absolutely. and you need some time. Yeah. But in the end, I think the way we've worked, we've come out with something that's presentable. Yeah, and I, I think that it's the way that we worked was the only way we could have done it. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't see how else you could do it. <laughs> no, I'm not sure either because, I mean, you could tell me a million things about the yarn and how it's meant to behave and whatnot. I can't know that until we've actually spun a bit and given it to you. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can like confer that idea and f mm. from me to soak it in and then that no. works. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> it doesn't work no, like that. No. It's not that easy. No. It's trial and error. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think we did a few tries, thought we were good, yeah. realised we could do better. Yeah. And, and obviously, we're not done yet. No. <laughs> At the moment, I'm sort of leaning towards thinking that it's a little bit heavy, uh, as in... And, and what do you reckon that's... what's the reason for that? Well, I think it's, it has to do with the, the types of wool in the blend. That we, we used uh, Gotland wool, we used Goethe, Leicester and Värmland. And, I mean, different types of wool have different sort of density and... Um, I would say Gotland and Leicester. Well, it's a bit heavier. Yeah. They're very sort of dense. Fully dense, yeah. yeah. Well, half a sack of Gotland can weigh 10 kilos, yeah. whether it's a full sack of Vanguard mm -hmm. may only weigh 10 kilos. Yeah. It's a completely different thing. So it's a different thing. So I think the weight comes from the ingredients. Sure. But when we blend those two, though, what, 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 what do you reckon happens there? When you blend Gotland and, and Vermont. Yeah, for instance. Well, I mean, you have the, the longer, outer, of course, hairs on the Vermont sheep, yep. which are in some ways a little bit similar to the Gotland fiber. Mm. And uh, you sort of increase that the volume of that type of fiber because the Vermont has both, both kinds of wool. Uh, it has the outer coat and the shorter fibers and uh, so then you've increased like the amount of the heavy fibers mm. which of course makes the fabric more durable uh, I mean this would be fantastic upholstery it would be super good for upholstery yeah uh, it might make f fairly good clothing too but I think you'd be it, if you're out in a rainstorm <laughs> you might want to gone to the gym before <laughs> it's gonna be pretty heavy um, um, but I think a lot of what, what we're trying to do and, and what we're sort of the reason why we keep going back and forth in between these blends uh, 
has to do with the weight, at least from my perspective. It has to yeah, do with because you're trying to make something, or you're trying to convince whoever might be using this in the future that this is the ideal material. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, it is made from a lot of different things. Yeah, yeah. So we did the right thing by, <laughs> yeah. like, okay, let's just take some of this yeah. and some of this and some of that and some of that. Mm -hmm. We'll throw that together, yeah. make a little cake, yeah. and uh, see what happens. Mm -hmm. what we've been talking about with the the colors uh, that since we have a mix of of fleeces of different colors that we might not be able to make large batches of the same exact same color every single time because there might be a certain percentage of white Värmland and a certain percentage of brown Värmland one time yeah and then it's completely different the next time so even if we have a, a like very specific recipe for each color, it's still going to be different. Yeah, it certainly will. But this isn't just one color. No, it's four. It's, it's four, four different yeah. colors. Actually, it's it could be we could be talking five. Yeah. If we count gray. Yeah. yeah thrown into yeah. the the gray wool that's yeah. in the blend. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Taking on the dyes in a different way mm -hmm. than the white wool would. So you get a contrast in a contrast. In everything, mm -hmm. which I thought was quite interesting, we had to fiddle a little bit with uh, <laughs> the dyeing process here yeah. and, and, and work because we didn't want to blend it out too much. No, too much would have made the same color. Yeah, yeah. But this has actually got some life in it. Yeah, you can see the changes in it. Yeah, yeah, and it's, I think that's another thing with you know talking about small changes alongside the road that makes a huge difference at the end. Mm. Uh, for instance, if you put do you put the colors in the picker like separately or do you put them in together? Uh, do you blend them before you put them in the picker or not? Uh, every single little thing. Well, that was something that we had to work yeah. out. Yeah. Because we didn't want that uniform color. No. We wanted it to change. Yeah, yeah. you want it to be sort of yeah mixed. So by the time it's gone through the card of the whole way to become a pre-yarn, mm -hmm. it's not blended too much. No. It's just enough room yeah. there for us to yeah. see all those colors yeah, yeah yeah and it's it's yeah that was a bit trickier than i thought that yeah. it would be actually because we in the beginning we sort of ended up with stripey yarn yeah <laughs> uh, but yeah we got there we got there we've done that right and i think that's again trial and error uh, sort of that that type of that that way of working that you have to be open to if yeah. you're gonna learn things because we would never have learnt that if we didn't try it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what would you say is the main challenge when you mix different types of fibres instead of just spinning one kind? There's, uh, there's more than just one challenge, there's a lot of challenges in that. You have to create a blend that somehow uh, wants to harmonize with, where the fibers wants, wants to harmonize with one another. Um, and, and when you're mixing different breeds, like, like the ones we're sitting with, mm -hmm. um, they're not the same. No, no. Uh, and, and you want some of the characteristics to come through from each and every one of them. And uh, you don't really know until you spun it. No. And in our case, we don't even know until... <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. It's been... Yeah, and presumably you've, you've 
chosen different uh, fibers because of their qualities and you want to keep sort of all of those qualities to some extent. To some extent. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're trying to create a tweed and, and we want that sort of coarseness, which we can get plenty of mm -hmm. in, in, in Swedish wool. Uh, but there's also that elemental softness that we want in there. Mm. Yeah, and then it's you know, striking the balance between all of them. Yeah. So that's, that's a huge challenge, which you sort of have to come at from different angles. Mm. Uh, until you can figure out what really works. Mm. So I think we've, I mean, we've, as you know, we've played with a lot of different yeah. brands here. Yeah. Yeah, and I think choosing the, the types of fiber to put in, I mean, there are so many aspects that go into that. For instance, like, you don't want to create a blend that has 2% added of something that's really rare and that you cannot find that often because you're going to end up not being able to make it because one day you're not going to be able to get that wool. Yeah, that's the other thing. You need wool that you know you can source mm -hmm. easily. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what we chose. Something that was there in enough a quantity uh, to allow us to just uh, plan a production. Mm. Yeah, so I mean in that stage it's also important to know what what wool do we have access to <laughs> and make a sort of judgment on what wool are we likely to have access to in the future as well tomorrow yeah mm.